What's up guys, welcome to the episode. Now is it true? Does muscle weigh more than fat? I have gotten this question quite a few times over the years, so I thought that I'd dedicate an episode to it to clear up the confusion for good. Now one pound of feathers weighs the exact same as one pound of rocks because they are both one pound. However, one pound of feathers is going to take up a lot more physical space than one pound of rocks because the feathers are far fluffier and the rocks are a lot more dense. The exact same concept applies to muscle and fat. So fat is the feathers in this analogy and rocks are muscle because one pound of fat is quote unquote fluffier and takes up more space whereas one pound of muscle is more dense and takes up less space. So if we have a 300 pound person at 40% body fat, which is very high, that's well within the obesity range, versus a 300 pound bodybuilding individual at 10% body fat, the person at 40% fat is going to take up a lot more space physically than the person at 10% body fat. Same total weight, but drastically different body composition and appearance. And you can feel it, right? When you hug someone who is carrying quite a bit of body fat, they feel fairly soft. And on the other hand, if you hug someone who is carrying a lot of muscle mass and is also quite lean, they feel harder or denser. This is exactly why. Now, what does this mean for us practically? How can we use this information in the context of changing our body composition because when someone asks, does muscle weigh more than fat? What they're really asking is one of the two following questions. The first one is, I saw the scale go up, did I gain muscle? And the second one is, I haven't stepped on the scale in a while and I'm heavier than I thought. Is it because I have a fair amount of muscle on my body? The answer to the first question, I saw the scale go up, did I gain muscle, depends on a few things, the most important of which is time. For example, if you stepped on the scale a week or two ago and you've gained weight since, you've almost certainly gained fat. And that's just because muscle gain is a very slow process in comparison to fat loss or fat gain. We can lose or gain pretty significant amounts of fat in only a week or two. For example, my client Rick lost 44 pounds of pure fat in 12 weeks. My client Allison lost 57 pounds of fat in 20 weeks. However, that doesn't apply to gaining muscle. Muscle gain is much, much slower. No one is putting on 44 pounds of muscle in 12 weeks. If someone put on 44 pounds of muscle over the course of an entire lifetime of training, that would be absolutely incredible. Like I'm talking 99th percentile incredible. As far as the second question goes, I haven't stepped on the scale in a while and I'm heavier than I thought, is it because I'm carrying a fair amount of muscle? The answer to that question is dependent more so on whether you've been resistance training or not and getting stronger. Because as a general rule, a bigger muscle is a stronger muscle. So if you haven't been lifting weights consistently, you almost certainly have not gained any muscle at all. If you're heavier, it's because you've gained essentially exclusively fat. And the reason that I say that is because the only way to gain muscle tissue is to provide a reason for it to grow, i.e. resistance training. Nutrition will support that growth, and it's an absolutely necessary piece of the puzzle. However, you cannot build muscle without the stimulus aspect in place. I'll provide a personal example here. As many of you know who have been following my journey, at my peak weight, I was 210 pounds and now I float between 145 and 150 pounds, which is 60 to 65 pounds less. Now I actually have more muscle mass now than I did at 210 pounds. So I lost over 65 pounds of pure body fat, which is kind of wild to think about. That's like a large kid. 
145 to 150 may sound super light to you. And honestly, it sounds light to me when I compare my body weight with the average male that's the same height as me. But point being, we're carrying around way more body fat than we think that we are. I can't tell you how many times I've had clients say, I'd like to lose 15 to 20 pounds, and then we drop 15 to 20 and they're like, oh man, I've got a lot more to lose than I thought. I wanna lose another 15 to 20. Moral of the story here is, most of us have more body fat than we think and less muscle than we think. I know I did. Now when women start to get leaner, they tend to realize that a lot of the boobs and butt that they thought that they had was actually body fat. Those are the two areas where women notice it the most. And for men, they typically see it in their chests, shoulders, and arms. They're like, I'm losing muscle. And I'm like, that was fat, dude. <laughs> now I'm not pointing fingers here. That was me too. I thought that I was carrying around way more muscle than I truly was until I got lean. It was a bit of a rude awakening, to be honest. So muscle and fat weigh the same, but fat is more fluffy and muscle is more dense. Also, if you want more muscle, you have to provide a reason for it to grow. Now, if you're already training and you start losing fat, as long as you continue to train, your muscle isn't going anywhere. Muscle loss is way overblown. You actually have to go out of your way to lose muscle, so don't sweat it. For men specifically, if you are not using performance enhancing drugs and your genetics aren't off the charts, you're most likely going to need to make a choice. And that choice is, do you want to look like you lift with a shirt on or with your shirt off? Because the truth is, most dudes are going to have a very hard time achieving both. So basically, do you want to look like you lift in a t-shirt and kind of soft without one, or do you want to look quote unquote kind of skinny in a t-shirt and lean without one? It's just not all that common to see guys that are natural that are looking jacked in a tee and lean when they pop the top. And if they do, they most likely have superior genetics. The thing is that in the fitness industry right now, more folks are using performance enhancing drugs than ever. And they're starting younger and younger. And so social media is a beautiful thing. It's an amazing tool, however, it does seem to be skewing what we tend to think is achievable for most people naturally. Because unless it's blatantly obvious, you never really know who's taking PEDs or not. This also applies for women, by the way. The drug use is not nearly as rampant in women as it is in men. However, it's there. And I feel for women and for men because it goes both ways. I cannot tell you how many times I've been called skinny or been told to go eat a burger, either in person or online. And the thing is, it's almost always guys making these comments. Typically, guys hear it from guys and women hear it from women. We talk about this social pressure for women to be skinny, and most often it's actually women applying this pressure to other women, and vice versa. It's men insulting other men. It's interesting because women take skinny as a compliment and men hate being called skinny. Calling a dude skinny is like calling a woman fat. I wouldn't recommend either. What I would recommend is using the scale as a tool to assess fat loss progress and use your performance in the gym to assess muscle building progress. Now, if the scale is trending down consistently, you are losing fat. And if you're getting stronger and progressively lifting heavier weights, you're almost certainly gaining muscle. It's just that fat loss is a much faster process than muscle gain. If you're interested in applying for one-on-one -on -one nutritional coaching and or workout design with me, you can click the link in the description below or head on over to n1fitness.com forward slash coaching. On Instagram, I'm at n1fitness. On TikTok, I'm at the N1 Fitness and on YouTube, I am at Marcus Sadu. Don't forget to leave us a five star review on your favorite podcast platform and be sure to hit the subscribe button. Thanks so much for tuning in. I hope that you found this episode useful and I will catch you on the next one. See ya!